Hey there everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're working on our iconic, awesome Dark Angels uh, Intercessor Marines here. So we're going to be painting up the new Marines in that classic, you know, deep green uh, armor of the Dark Angels. Now, um, I know that the Dark Angels are supposed to be dark, I get it, but we still want to add a little bit of brightness to this model, um, just because it's so easy to get that, that you know, that kind of you know, overly dark, overly washed model. So uh, we still want to go for lots of contrast lots of color uh, we are going to be going dark though like the greens and the blacks but you know we'll do some sharp highlights we'll throw in some bright accents and uh, it's going to look pretty darn sharp so um, without further ado we'll get this guy primed up in white uh, I do want those colors to come across nice and bright even though they're darker question mark but um, uh, we're gonna prime them up in white to get started and yeah we'll be right back and uh, get him cooking Okay, so we got our Primaris Marine all, uh, you know, primed up here in Korax White. And the next step we're going to do is just to do a simple base coat of uh, Caliban Green. Um, now, with this, I'm going to uh, stay away from the spots that I'm going to hit eventually here with different color. Uh, but I figured, uh, I mean, we could just do a light base coat over top. But for me, I think uh, just to save me a little bit of work kind of moving forward... Um, I'm going to start with just a kind of a, just kind of a thin down base coat on everything. Now the bolt rifle is going to primarily be, um, you know, kind of that silver metallic color and black. Um, so I'll just do the hands uh, leading up. Um, I'll avoid the aquile on the chest, but uh, the helmet and you know all the rest of the armor will all be done just as a base in this Caliban green. Uh, on the pack, I'm just going to avoid that grill at the back and that reactor cover there as well. But I can just get in here and be pretty sloppy and fast and furious with this paint. And just kind of get them all base coated up. Now you might need two thin base coats, but uh, it, we get pretty good coverage out of this anyway. All right, so it took me a few just kind of thinner coats to get that green that I wanted. You'll see it's still, you know, not a solid coat, but we'll be washing and returning to it. So uh, we don't want too much paint on there. So we'll work our way through. Um, the next one I'm going to work on now is um, a quick layer of Screaming Skull. And I'm going to do that on the face plate of the mask. And I just want to do that because um, these guys are... I. Yes, they're Dark Angels, I totally get that. Um, but what I want to do is just add just a tiny bit of extra lightness because you're kind of drawn to the face. And I did it with my Ultramarines as well. And I really like the fact that we get just a little bit of extra uh, love going on here. So it doesn't have to be perfect, clearly. Uh, we are going to be revisiting. So this is a thin coat of Screaming Skull. Just want to make sure I don't get too much on there. So I'll do another thin coat in a second. Uh, but I'll do that there. And then the next one I'm going to work on is going to be our um, lead belcher. And this is basically going to cover all the metallics of the model. And uh, there's going to be lots to play with in here. Now the reason I'm doing the metallics uh, first, uh, as with all my other painting and stuff, is I just want to make sure um, that I get... Uh, that base coating down and it's a lot easier to paint the larger areas around the metallics than it is to you know just kind of paint the metallics on without messing up your other layers so I'm going to work my way around the uh, bolt carbine here and I'll do uh, the handle and again if you're a little sloppy it's it's great to do it this way because then you're you know you're completely covered you'll you'll come back in with your uh, we're gonna come in with a bad and black on top of this here so it looks a little messy right now. Okay, on the bolt rifle, I'll also do the back. It's a little tough to see here. I'll just do this with some thinned out lead belcher here. Uh, we'll do that kind of casing and holding thing up there. It's pretty wet. Let's move that paint around a little bit. Okay, so I'll mirror that on both sides. Uh, in addition to that as well, we'll do the anything that is functional. So any of these accordion type joints uh, that are on here. So we'll do the accordion joints. Just kind of sneak in there like this. And there's a bunch of these around. They're, they're on the kind of the, the, the hip joints. They're on the, the, the knee joints at the back. Can you guys see that little bit of dog hair that's sitting right there? The joys of having an animal in the house for sure. Uh, I'll do it on these leads as well at the back. 
the handle of the pistol. Okay, on the body at the back here, there's also those leads from the armor there. And we can always come back in and tidy this up as well. Continuing on with the back, we'll look at the backpack here. Uh, we've got these little vents down at the bottom. We've got these leads on the side, which we'll do. Uh, it's a little bit tricky, but we'll do this ring around the reactor. The back here. Uh, the vents underneath. There's a little exhaust down here. And you'll see that we'll go just, there's the armor plating up at the top here. We'll just sneak in under that. So we've got that green plate up top and that lead belcher, that silvery armor plate down at the bottom. And what it does is it actually brightens up the model a ton. Uh, even though it's a dark model, I kind of want to get as little darkness as I can on it, if that makes sense. I want it to be a bright, high contrast model, but I don't necessarily want it to... Um, I don't necessarily want it to be just that dark. I want it to be high contrast, even though it's a darker kind of paint scheme. So yeah, look, I totally uh, <laughs> totally got it on the green there, but that's cool. We'll just come back in and tidy that up after. Okay, moving to the front. At the back of the pack, behind the head, there's this little bit of silver. We'll just tuck stuff in there like that. On the helmet, uh, just outside of the ears, we'll pick out those little details. Like that and the cabling that goes to the face mask there and again if we go over we can always come back in and clean it up I have no idea but my brush is like super fraying right now all right and on the front uh, we've just got a few of these kind of accordion pieces here on the insides uh, we've got the clip of the belt that kind of belt buckle piece and then any accordion bits on the arms here and if you want, there's any leads here on the side. Okay, so I'm going to work my way around. Uh, I'm going to make sure that I get all those uh, the little bendy bits. Anything that's kind of functional. Uh, the metallic bits, uh, bits off the bolt rifle. And um, yeah, it looks pretty good. I think I just need to finish off the rest of the bolt rifle. And then we'll come back and do the, uh, the, the golds. Okay, so I went around and found all the silver parts, and while I was searching around, I also found a purity seal, and I just kind of topped that up in Screaming Skull. I thought I just wanted to mention that. So uh, let's move on to our Retributor armor, and um, that'll do all our golds. Uh, and uh, super simple with this one. Again, we're going to do it kind of in a sloppy way, uh, fast and furious, if you will, um, just because I want to, um, you know, we're going to be coming back in with that base of a bad and black uh, to tidy most of this stuff up. So any of the decorative kind of symbols here that you see, um, the Aquila clearly on the chest is uh, one of those as well. So I'll do uh, those decorative elements in there. And if you had the Dark Angels upgrade sprues, you might want to do additional uh, bits and pieces. And you will see as that Aquila is tough to get to, you get a little bit messy on your other colors, uh, but that's totally fine. We're going to come back in and just do a final uh, kind of tidy pass as we move along. Okay, so as I was finishing up the golds, um, I wanted to put a little bit of thought into what I was going to do for the heraldry markings. And it was a call one way or the other whether, whether I was going to do the, the, the pauldron trim here in gold as well. Uh, and I think I'm actually going to go ahead and do that. So um, I'll take again, continuing on with my retributor armor, um, I'm going to just go back now and uh, I, I like the fact that sometimes this can be a bit of a fluid thing. Um, but uh, I'm just going to go in here now and I'll just do the trim around the outside uh, with Retributor Armor. And again, if you get sloppy and you go over, not a big deal. We are going to be coming back and tidying up uh, those pauldrons uh, in the end after the wash and all that. All right, and then we'll move on to the Abaddon Black part. Um, and uh, that part is going to be essentially, um, we've just got a few kind of pieces to play around with. Uh, I want to do all the weapons in Abaddon Black. And I want to do the leather, uh, kind of the uh, the holstery bits, the um, uh, the belt bits, all that, the pouches, things like that. Uh, I want to do those in Abaddon Black as well. 
So I'll just get a nice uh, easy coat on the holster here. I need a couple coats. All right, but I'll also go to the belt in the back. Okay, and then on these little pouches here, I'll get these guys in black as well. And I'll also go for uh, the cowling, the covering here of the bolt rifle. And uh, you'll notice that I actually found the correct brush. The other one was kind of a sloppy uh, brush, but it's uh, black as well, go figure. So I had the wrong brush. So I'm glad I found the right brush for this detail bit here. And we're just going to go over, and because we have such great coverage with that black, all the sloppiness we had with our metallics, we can take a little bit of extra time and we can just do that nice line uh, from the outside as opposed to trying to just get those particular line elements uh, in there. So it keeps nice, happy lines here. Okay, so we're pretty much done with the base colors here. Um, I just got one more thing to tidy up, the purity seal. I'm gonna do that with Mephiston Red and um, any of the seals on the legs, what have you, um, I'll do that. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll just do a quick pass over the model uh, afterwards uh, to make sure I caught everything. Uh, when I was doing the black, uh, I forgot the um, the knee pad here. I wanted that done in black as well. Uh, and you know, you can see I went over the cowling and everything here. So it's really kind of coming together in terms of shape. Now you can see there's a lot of spots where I totally went overboard. Um, you know, whether it's with the metallics, uh, you can see on the backpack here or on the face, you can see it's a little bit sloppy. So what I'm going to do is go in and tidy that up with my uh, basing colors, my Caliban green. I'll use for, you know, the majority of the work that's in here just to kind of tidy this up a little bit. Um, but if I went, uh, you can see on the back of the reactor, I need to tidy this up as well. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'll go and I'll tidy everything up. Uh, I'll make sure all my colors are, you know, didn't bleed too much into one another uh, just before I do that wash. And I'll get the basing done uh, in terms of its primary colors as well because I want to wash it at the same time. So uh, I'll get on that and we'll come right back uh, and we'll wash this guy. All right, so I've got them all kind of tidied up. I went over, you can see around the, uh, the, the helmet here and the casing for the bolt rifle. Uh, and I just kind of made sure that I cleaned up all the lines going back and forth with different colors just, just before that wash. So it's kind of like a final uh, dummy check. Uh, I made sure it was nice and clean around the knee pad. And then at the back, uh, I should probably let you guys know, I just did a little bit of black. I changed my mind. I just want a little bit of black, a little bit of darkness, a little bit of color variation at the back there of the backpack. So um, nice, clean and simple and easy. Um, and so far it's, you know, been pretty simple. There's not been a whole lot of complexity in terms of the colors that we've chosen. And now we're going to wash it. Now, this is a homegrown wash that I use for pretty much everything else. It's 25% uh, Nuln Oil, 25% Agrax Earthshade, and 50% floor wax. Um, and it can be any kind of cheapy floor wax you get at Tesco or Walmart or, or what have you. Um, this one in particular is, I think it's a, um, it's a, uh, Pledge with future, I think, is this one. Uh, they last forever, so it's kind of tough to, <laughs> kind of tough to tell. Um, anyway, okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start kind of upside down, uh, and this is a very uh, liquidy uh, wash. The the floor wax acts as a flow aid, and it uh, it's a great way to kind of do it. So I find that it um, just very lightly tints the, uh, the 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 piece that you're painting. Um, but it does, in fact, uh, just kind of flow. So you can go a little, uh, a little uh, fast and loose with the washing there, but you'll see immediately it starts dragging out the detail, uh, especially in all the metallics and all of that uh, on the shoulder pauldrons, everything. So I'm just going to make sure that I don't let it pool up. Um, it's not too thick, but it still might pool. And if it does start to pool for whatever reason, you just take your brush and you just kind of tap it and soak it up like a, like a sponge, I guess. All right, so I'll wash the whole model in its entirety, making sure it doesn't pool up in certain spots. And uh, we'll let it sit for about 45 minutes or so, and we'll be right back and continue on with our painting. Okay, so after the wash is uh, dried here, you can see that we've got loads of detail. And despite the fact that the model's pretty dark, we're using blacks and greens and all of that. Uh, despite that fact, uh, it still comes together quite nicely. And you can even see that the detail has been picked out in the face. Uh, and all the gold in here. So actually really looking forward to seeing how this kind of progresses forward now. Um, so let's get back into it. So what we're going to do is we're going to start reapplying the color and we're going to do it by starting with our Caliban green again. And because we're going to highlight this, 
Uh, we kind of want that three layers of shade, basically. We want, um, you know, the, the kind of the recessed washed green. And then on top of that, we're going to want our base color, our Calvan green. And then we're going to come back in with a lighter green again and just, uh, and just kind of keep going. So the trick here now is I want a little bit of texture. I want a little bit of kind of worn uh, kind of look to it. But the problem is, is that we don't have... Uh, a lot of you know three-dimensional detail on the pauldrons. We have loads on all the plates and stuff. Um, so for the pauldrons, what I'm going to do is just start streaking this uh, Caliban green in, and I'm going to make sure that <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to make sure that all those uh, recessed shaded parts uh, still stick around, so we get that nice kind of you know gradation of color there. We'll do the same for the legs here as well. Again, just kind of bringing in all that little bit of bringing back that color just a little bit, all the while making sure that we maintain that gradation. On the little pads here, we'll just do something called an overbrush, which is like a kind of a wet dry brush, I guess. We're just going over the principal highlights. Uh, you can see we'll bring out the detail on the hands and we'll go on. So I'll just keep going over top of this. I'll go over back over all the green. Um, the helmet's kind of the next tricky part here. I'll go over all the green and again just leaving that recessed color and again because it's so dark on this guy uh, it might be a little tricky to see but your eye will still pick up on it. So with that deep kind of green on you can already start to see that gradation there so you have the dark and then the light and all we're going to do now is we're going to pump that up a little bit more. Um, again the model's very uh, dark so I want to kind of get as much contrast as I can out of that darker color and what makes this deep rich green so nice and deep is if we have good sharp highlights on it and for that i'm going to use a warpstone glow and um what this should do is by taking a really kind of not extreme highlight but a really kind of punchy you know high pigment colorful highlight uh, by taking our warpstone glow here what we can do is we can really kind of pop up that green so I'm just going to go a little bit over an edge like this and you can see how it just pops that green and really kind of sells it visually I guess to your eyes. So when you get to certain spots like uh, the elbow here, the elbow is one of the tricky spots to do uh, just because it's not raised and it's really tough to get that nice kind of edge on here. So watch this. So I'm going to go a little bit sloppy on that. And then what I'll do is I'll come back in a second and I'll take that Caliban green and I'll just go back in and repaint it. It's a lot easier to paint kind of the larger area and subtract away. Uh, if you want to see a whole video on this, I did a whole video on um, subtractive edge highlighting. And so you just look it up. Just, just, just look up subtractive edge highlighting. You'll, you'll see it come up. And um, you come back in basically and you kind of top up that color. All right. So uh, obviously all these edges are pretty straightforward in terms of what we're going to do with our edge highlight. So uh, it's really going to punch up that green, which is nice. Now you're going to run into a few spots where you're not really going to have, the primaries have such nice solid lines, but there's a few spots where you won't have that. Um, for example, if you'll see this here, we've got the kind of the reactor on the outside. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of gently go around uh, without a lot of paint on my brush. And just kind of build up some color around the outside there. You can also do a little bit of a streak here. Uh, on the armor panels, uh, sorry, the, the armor panels on top of the, the kind of vents at the back. Uh, if you want to do the round, I'm just going to just touch a little bit on top here like this. Okay. Uh, and I'll still go around and do the edging. But the big one I want to show you is the uh, pauldrons. So for the pauldrons, there's really two ways you can kind of go about it, um, or the two ways that, I'll, that I will deal with it here. Um, first off, I'm just going to take um, a little bit at the top here and just, just kind of continue on with that kind of lined uh, approach there, just like this, just to give a little bit of color back to that pauldron at the top. And then what I'll do as well is, again, very much that subtractive edge highlighting. I'll just paint on the inside just like this, okay? And there's two ways I can deal with this kind of sloppy mess here in the end. So I'll work my way around uh, inside the pauldron, 
I'll come back with the Caliban green to tidy it up a little bit and then when we black line at the end of the painting process we'll restore that line between the gold and the green. So bear with me here on this. Uh, we'll uh, Let's get this uh, edge highlighting kind of done and then uh, we'll touch up with the Caliban green and I'll actually show you that as well. After the highlighting's all done, uh, you can see that there is, you know, it's a big sloppy mess. I just want to make sure that the camera kind of gets the shots here. Uh, the pauldrons are a bit sloppy. The uh, the head, the crest on the top of the head's a bit sloppy. And you get other areas that are a little bit tricky as well, kind of like this, this, this straight up piece here on the side of the backpack, things like that. Uh, the knees, all of that. So what I want to show you is basically the other part of just kind of fixing it. Now, a lot of people think you have to paint perfectly the first time, uh, but if you're painting like, you know, 15, 20 guys, um, especially the Primaris Marines, they're really well suited for this, this technique anyway. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and take my Caliban Green and I'm just going to paint back uh, some of the um, some of the base color in there so that we can make that highlight uh, a little bit thinner. So let's let's take a look at that. So all I'm going to do now is just touch in a bit of that color and if it's you know if you take too much of the highlight away you can almost wipe it away with your finger and you'll maintain that highlight that's on there uh, this is really good for these narrow spots so I just actually after our conversation just a second ago uh, I just kind of painted really hard on that uh, elbow uh, plate there and then all I'm going to do is take my paint and just paint back in that detail that's on there now this is a much easier approach than trying to get that perfect highlight. Okay, so I'll let that dry and see how that looks. But if you're tearing through a whole bunch of guys, uh, it actually does a pretty good job of just picking out kind of discrete little highlights there or just kind of leaving those discrete highlights. Uh, if you've got plates like this too, you can touch in a bit of color and all it does is it restores uh, that little bit left. Now. On this guy here, you'll see that it again, it's very it kind of tough to paint that. But if I just paint that one line up the middle, I've now split it and I've got two highlights in there. So I'm going to go back in and just kind of revisit um, that those all those edge highlights. And I'm going to go in and just make sure I restore that base color back in. It might sound like it takes longer, but it, it really doesn't. You can go really fast with this method. And before I sign off with this method, you can see on the pauldrons, it's going to make a really big difference. See how sloppy I kind of made that? I did that a little bit intentionally just to show you. But now I can go back in and I can just paint back in that detail just like this. And all that does is it acts as refining that edge highlight quite a bit. Way easier to paint it this way than, uh, than trying to be absolutely bang on perfect. All right, we're looking pretty solid, and now we're gonna work on the blacks, and of course our highlight for the black is going to be Eschen Gray. Um, nice, clean, simple, and easy. And again, if we uh, if we overdo it, or if we uh, over edge highlight or whatever, we can always go back in uh, and uh, really just kinda do it up gently again with a little bit of Abaddon Black, and then we're good to go. All right, so I'll work my way around, getting all the casings and all that. And then I'll tidy up if needs be. Uh, there's the obviously the the bolt rifle and then the uh, the knee pad as well. And you can either do it like a, you know a circle around it, or you can just do a rounded kind of highlight at the top. Black's one of those colors that you can just highlight a little bit and it'll be fine. Uh, remember, black on your models isn't the color black. It's like a dark gray, right? And that's what your eyes want to perceive. Then you can see the detail and the contrast, and you can actually black line it as well, which is. Uh, which is pretty neat. Um, the other black spots we want to get on here, this little piece at the back, this little bit of the framework here. Okay, and then of course we'll do the uh, the actual kind of pouches here. Okay, and we can always come back in and just touch up with a little bit of a bad and black, uh, especially if you're doing something like these belts. Make sure you can see that on the camera. Oh, just. Uh, it's a very dark model. Uh, go figure, it's a dark angel. Uh, so you can just do the top line of the belts there as well. So uh, I'll work through, I'll grab all the black bits. There's not a whole bunch on here. Uh, the casing for the bolt rifle, uh, you know, the holster, the pouches, the belt, uh, even the little buckly dues up here we probably need to get. 
Okay, uh, but I'll work my way around. Uh, just make sure that everything's fine. If I need to top up with the bad and black, I'm good to go. And then we'll work on the metallics. So again, with any of the models uh, that we have that we're painting like a darker paint scheme, you're always looking for an excuse to add brightness to it. The trick with having dark models is to not have them be that dark, um, even though the, the schemes are pretty dark. So whenever we get a pop for high contrast or an opportunity, uh, we're going to take it. So in this case here, we're going to use a fairly bright uh, Rune Fang steel, uh, and we're going to highlight all of the kind of silvery bits to this guy. Um, now, I think I like the uh, kind of the accordion uh, joints and stuff as they are. But I do think for things like the bolt rifle or, um, uh, you know, things like the uh, the magazine down underneath here. Okay, I think we're just going to add little punches of color uh, to this uh, to this stuff in here. So just kind of a gentle application on the edges. But you can see how that adds such a large degree of, uh, you know, just general pop. So I'm just going to overbrush. So just picking out kind of the major high level highlights, maybe sneaking in the odd uh, edge highlight in there as well. Okay, uh, grabbing all the little bits that stick out carefully. Right, so this gives us little punches of brightness and color uh, that we wouldn't have normally uh, had before. Uh, now on the, uh, on the backpack, uh, it's nice because we can just do a quick overbrush kind of of these edges here. I just add a bit of pop. The metallic will stick with the rest uh, on the rings of the exhausts here. We can grab those, right? Um, and I'll work my way around to make sure I got everything here. Uh, what else? Little things like little cables, you know, the handle of the bolt pistol, things like that. Wherever you want, just an extra little bit of punch. The uh, belt buckle in here, right? Um, now on the... Uh, backpack uh, we've got this ring around the outside so I'll catch we got the leads um, but we'll catch this ring around the outside here and the leads there and then um, just kind of the round part of these exhausts at the back we'll catch those and then uh, I'll catch these two little pips at the top like that and I'll go in here and I'll just do an edge highlight keeping that nice kind of shading that we have going on in there. All right, and if I get some paint off my brush here, I can just go over these vents at the back and just pop out a little bit of color there. Okay, I'll go tidying up all of the silver and then we'll come back and do the gold, anything like little leads like this, right? So try and look your way around, find all the bits of silver that you might have missed. <laughs> these things at the back here, these little uh, these little cabling things. And just um, when you got lots of paint, do your edges. And when you're kind of running out of paint, just rub it a bit on your palette and then go after the kind of these, you know, ribbed features here. All right, I'll keep grinding away and we'll be back and do the gold. All right, so the last piece on here, we've just got a few kind of small details left and I'm just gonna tear through them fairly quickly. There's not a lot of gold, there's not a lot of red, there's not a lot of bone color. So we'll just go through these uh, fairly quickly here. Uh, I'm going to use Fulgrite Copper now to highlight the gold. And I really like it. A lot of people highlight with a silver or a bit of gold or they'll work it up to a silver or what have you. Uh, where Fulgrite has this, it's this awesome color uh, when it dries, it's like a very bright gold, but it's got flecks of silver in it. And it's pretty amazing. Like I love the end result of it. And what it does is it acts as a perfect highlight, I think for retributor armor. And uh, yeah, I really, really like it. So I'm just doing a, a careful highlight over the retributor armor uh, for the uh, for that kind of skull and wing on the uh, bolt rifle. I'm just going to overbrush the Aquila on the chest just to give it that little bit of a pop. I'll even reach into that corner there and give it a little bit of light. Okay. And um, the last piece here is going to be on the uh, the pauldrons, actually. So that's going to be super easy. And for the pauldrons, uh, depending on how light you want it, you can start with just the uh, kind of the rounded edges here. Uh, and I can do it like in uh, the corners as well. But I might just work my way uh, and do the, the highlight for the whole thing. Now, again, if you mess up, we can always reach in with a bit of those wonderful base paints, that Caliban green. And we can, uh, you know, just improve the lines if we need to. And we can see how really nice and warm this color looks. And it's got a very vibrant, bright 
punch of color. Okay, so with the golds all done, we're just gonna work on the red now. Uh, we got that Wild Rider red, uh, just as a great highlight for that Mephiston red. Um, I like that it's got a little bit of, I don't know, it's just, it's just really, really bright, which I think I like. So make sure you got lots of control. And I'm just gonna go in and just touch around that outer ring of that seal there. Red's done. Okay, and then we'll use Screaming Skull next, and we're going to use that on two parts. Uh, the first part is going to be the uh, Purity Seal, and the second part is going to be just that face mask there. Again, just to give it just a little bit of punch of brightness would be perfect. So you can do like a little edge highlight around, and then I just do these kind of lateral lines, uh, just so it's got a bit of texture. It looks a bit like parchment. All right, brilliant. Look at that. Perfect. Uh, now on the mask, uh, I'm just going to go in here and just do like an overbrush of all the raised details. All right, so I've gone ahead and finished off the base and uh, he's looking great. You can see that the, uh, the bone adds a little bit of kind of cool intensity to the face there. Uh, if you overdo it with the bone, you can always go back in with a bit of wash and touch it up. And the model is essentially done. However, there's one more piece that I do and I use these Micron pens here. Um, there's, these are fantastic actually. It allows me to black line uh, just kind of in and around where the different colors meet and it adds, even though it's quite dark here, it adds a level of kind of intensity where the colors meet and it um, it black lines a bit if you get a little bit on it you can notice I just wipe it off while it was wet so with the micron pen I'm going to go in and just pick out all these little kind of spots wherever the two colors meet uh, if you get a little bit on that's not a big deal you can always wipe it off and wherever two colors meet as in the case of this pauldron uh, or wherever two textures meet let me just get this done here Okay, and you can see that that black lining just adds just a little bit of extra definition and it looks really sharp. It really kind of tidies up all the colors, you name it. Uh, the other spot that I'm going to do is these legs here. You can see wherever those two textures kind of meet. So same color, but different textures, or you'll see on the back here on the legs, you've got the lines. We can go in here and we can do a really solid job of dressing up those lines that are in the back and just kind of bringing them out again but especially all these little kind of divity bits here technical term divity bits um, but anywhere where the two colors meet or the two textures meet even up here on the vents um, I'm going to go and work my way through it's especially prevalent kind of on the helmets here and that kind of provides your biggest uh, defining part there and it really just pops all those highlights out by having that dark uh, contrast against the light there perfect okay so I will work my way around and uh, we'll see how it goes and uh, we'll close off the video all right so now he's all finished up and um, yeah I'm really liking the colors I like the that kind of deep verdant green um, I love the fact that they're still quite dark but we've really uh, done the brightening up if you will uh, on the the metallics which really kind of shine the the mask is a bit lighter the purity seals are nice and bright um, and the metallics just offer loads of different kind of perspective there which is great uh, by coming in with the pen after we've really shown a contrast and even though it was quite dark before and you couldn't see that black fading up to the dark green fading up to the painted dark green fading up to the to the lighter green up there just gives us a lot of personality uh, with our with our unit here so um, really liking the the end result of this and I love the dark angels I think you know there's such an iconic uh, such an iconic you know, you know team if you will in the in the 40k universe so um, first army was dark angels and man yeah I love I love the look and feel of these guys now, this is uh, part one in a two-part video uh, series, I guess. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the iconography for these guys here. Um, we're going to do something with some kind of cool heraldry on the shoulder pauldrons and on the knees. Uh, we'll work on the purity seals and all that. But that wraps up this video. So, um, first off, uh, thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope it was of value. Um, Make sure if you're interested in more videos like this, uh, well, obviously you like it, hit the like button for sure. Um, but if you're interested in more videos like this, the algorithms have kind of changed a bit. 
Even when you subscribe, make sure you hit that little bell button uh, on the side and it'll make sure that you get notifications. The algorithms are really shuffling things up. So even though you're subscribed, you just might not get content out there. So, uh, or come back and check every now and then, whatever works for you guys. Um, if you wanna contribute to the channel a little bit more, there's a join button now right by that subscribe, uh, which allows you to make some contributions and all that cash goes directly back into the channel. So thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you liked it and we'll catch you in the next video. Thank you.